Grow your practice. Grow your wealth. Grow your impact. Find out how to spend less time in the dental chair and more time on the things you love. Welcome back to the Dental Wealth Podcast. That was a dramatic entry. Another amazing oh. episode we have got planned for you. I have no idea what Matthew's going to ask me today. This is going to be the impromptu Dental Wealth Podcast. The- Impromptu. Well, you know, there's I, a hot. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that when I'm in, when I'm speaking in front of groups, my favorite time is when people just ask me off the wall questions. And people have asked me before, like, do you want the questions ahead of time? I'm like, nah. I think it's always better to be authentic and just, you know, I think I think sometimes people are over prepared, they're overthinking it. I, I'd rather just be off the cuff because then it's just authentic, right? Yeah. So and then you can't prep your answers. You can always tell when somebody has answers prepped. They're like. Here's my talking point. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, well, technically, we're recording this, so Reese could always edit it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, Reese says, although I will say that uh, the bloopers reel, he didn't tell me last time when we released the bloopers reel. I'm like, oh my God, it's embarrassing. But anyhow, lots, lots of singing involved. <laughs> lots of singing involved. Um, which we just were doing. We were doing the uh, We All the World before this started, right? The old uh, <laughs> headphone to the side. We were practicing our inner vocals with these new mics. We were like, hmm, we sound pretty good. <laughs> All right, Matthew. All right, From our so Dallas, loca- about- D- Dallas location where it's where it's hot and balmy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, it's been, it's been 100 degrees the past several days. <laughs> so it's great. So what I would like to talk about today is, it's a hot topic in the news right now, it's the whole thought process of raising minimum wage. So when it comes to a dental practice, what are your thoughts if the rest of the world is trending towards, you know, $15 an hour, what does that mean for a dental practice? Should they start looking at potentially raising wages, front desk people, hygienists, all of that considered, what are your thoughts? You and I did talk about this a little bit now. I know this topic you're talking about. Okay, so here's what I was telling you. Right? We talked about this and I said, you know, if I hire somebody for $40,000 at Tower Leadership, like, it, they're not going to work out. Like, like, right, we tried that. It's not going to work out. So I don't understand how you pay someone $9 an hour and it works out. I just don't get that because now I, I, you know, obviously we have high standards, you know, but I mean, I don't know how at nine bucks an hour you get somebody who can actually do the job well. Okay. First of all, Mm -hmm. that's a... (laughs) I, you know, I, that's a whole other conversation, but I'm not sure how yeah, it's funny. You nine bucks an hour. I wonder why they, we keep going through front office people. Cause yeah, I wonder why our marketing them, isn't working because McDonald's <laughs> pays them more. Maybe <laughs> uh, that might be why here's your sign, yeah. right? You know, it was, mm-hmm. remember that the episode we did one, not too long ago. It was like, you might be a mom and pop if, you know, it's yeah. like, if you pay yeah. someone $9 an hour, you might be a mom and pop. If the second biggest producer in your practice, the front desk person, is being paid nine dollars an hour, you might be a mom and pop. <laughs> Holy shit! I mean, nine bucks an hour. I don't even know. I I wasn't paying people nine dollars an hour. You know, damn near twenty years, years ago. ago. I mean, I, I did nine dollars an hour. If if you're paying somebody nine dollars an hour right now, stop. Like, oh yeah. my gosh. I mean, look. Now there's some people right now who's like, oh, I've had somebody nine dollars an hour, and you're underpaying them. Yeah. Okay, and Stop. let's make the point that a dental practice is different than a McDonald's. Can we so do that, first, please? Can we do that <laughs> when you're when you're looking at the rest of the industry and you're you're trying to figure out because McDonald's and Chipotle and all of these major franchises are raising their minimum wage from seven fifty to fifteen dollars to twelve, whatever it yeah. is, twelve dollars. That's not it's. Yeah. Now let me it's, let me make sure to your dental practice. <laughs> let me sh- make sure before people get political on me. I don't believe in raising minimum wage, and there's a reason why. Because I believe you get paid for value, not time. If you want more, you just become more valuable. Okay, we don't need to get into this whole conversation. So please don't get political on me. It's not the point. Don't miss the point because you get dogmatic with me. The point what Matthew's making is is you know when you start looking at the amount we pay people. And if we use a comparison subset of McDonald's as a employee group and say that somebody who is uneducated flipping burgers is making more money than my person at the front desk who is responsible for millions of dollars worth of revenue coming into my organization, that is alarming and is Mm -hmm. a wake up call to you to say, 
Am I truly paying my team adequately? See, you, you'll talk to your dental friends and you'll say, well, how much are you paying your front desk person? Because by the way, that's what you guys do. You guys call each other and go, how much would you pay this person? Mm-hmm. First, the question is, you know, what is your growth rate? How big are you? Like what? Because here I, I would want to know, like, who am I comparing myself to? Do I want to take advice from this person? If your price is doing 800 grand and you've been sitting there for 27 years, I'm not taking advice from you on who I should hire. I'm sorry, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think, you know, when I look at this, I started DSO tomorrow. There's no way in hell I'm paying somebody nine bucks to pick up my phones. Like it's not happening. Yeah. I'm going to go find somebody who I can educate, who I can train, who is compelled to pick up the phone, who will be there longer than six months, who I can, you know, who wants to, to take a leadership position, who enjoys greeting patients, who now some of you might say mm-hmm. now, now let me, let me just give you a story. Here's a story. Let me give you a story. I had a young lady in 2007. Okay. So I want you to think about how long ago that was. And at that time, she was making under $10 an hour. Okay, this very, she started with us. She had made under $10 an hour. I walked up to her one day and I gave her a $15 an hour raise. So I moved her up to $15 an hour. Now this was 2007, so I want you to think about inflation rates on that, okay? Why did I do that? She never asked for a raise, by the way. I pulled her aside and I paid her. Uh, because the value she provided to the dental office was so great that I was like, wow, if we lost this person, like I'm not going to wait for her to shop herself and leave us. I'm going to go ahead and pay her what she's worth because if I lose her, it would cost me, it would be so hard to find this person again. So I pulled her aside and just gave her a raise. Now, I certainly could have probably just moved her up $1 an hour and she would have saved, but that's just completely... BS because the truth is she was worth a lot more. And because I'm a business person, I as a business person I go, look, I wanna I want to top grade and I want to bring in top talent. I want to retain top talent. I want them to I want the best of the best in my organization. Uh, you know, last podcast, we talked about this, the, the great space race and competing. And, you know, I want if I'm going to compete in the new dental economy, I have to be competitive. I have to be able to have the best team. Um, and you know, it's like the person who's paying $9 an hour is also pissed off that every six months have to go hire someone new. Mm -hmm. Look, I I think that you've got to realize that because, and by the way, I bring up the example I brought up is because somebody inevitably is going to listen to this podcast and say, well, I'm paying Susie $9 an hour and she's a great employee and she's never quit. Well, then you're a thief. And I, okay, maybe that's a good thing. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, hold on. I don't want to think. I got the wheels turning right now. Hold on. I I know, but someone's going to be like, someone's going to be like, he's he's call me a thief. Hold on. Let me, let me just, maybe that's a, maybe that, maybe that was a little bit (laughs) passionate. Okay. I'll pull back. Maybe a thief is a strong word. But I think that I think that it is it, it, when you have somebody who is doing such an amazing job for your organization, bringing top tons of revenue, and and, and is a leader and and is is a passionate, amazing person, and you know they're worth a heck of a lot more, and you intentionally pay them low because you'll know that they'll take that. I've got to question your own business business acumen and your morals because. There's something about that 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 really bothers me and irks me um, because you'll be the person why you can't understand why you've hit a, a growth, you know, a, a ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, and so anyhow, I'll back away. Now I'll let yeah. you jump in. <laughs> well, one, to touch on that, they're not treating their organization as a business um, when they're trying to just pay everybody nine dollars an hour. They're in constant turnover. That's not business philosophy. But from what I was going to say is we always talk about, you know, if there's if there's not competition now, there will be. So let's play this scenario out. Let's say um, McDonald's and all these fast food franchises start raising their minimum wage to $15. Well, now you have to compete with them because your front desk person who's making, who could potentially be making less than $15 an hour comes to you and says, why would I work? And if you've ever seen a front desk person, they're busy. They're picking up the phone. They're checking people out. Oftentimes, why would they go through that stress when they could go, you know, put fries in a basket and make the same? And this always comes back down to what you've stressed since the first day I've ever met you was vision. And a lot of you guys, you know, you you breeze over that and you're just like, oh, vision. Here we go again. Well, the reason why that person will work with 
you for about the same money as what a fast food worker can do is because you've shared the vision with them. And it's a good way for you if this does go into place. We're not, we don't know if it's going to go into place, but if it does go into place and you start losing people because of that and they decide to go work somewhere else, it's probably because you didn't share with them what the long term outcome of their position looks like. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, I can't imagine, I guess is what maybe a better way to say it is looking at somebody and saying, look, I'm going to pay you $9 an hour. You're a dead end job. There's no chance for advancement. There's no chance for leadership. There's no chance for you to move up. I don't even care about you and I don't care about your future. I ultimately want you to shut up, answer the phones like I told you to. Oh, by the way, here's a script. I want you to say it exactly how um, I'm telling you to say it. I want you to convert phone calls into to patients. I want you to be perfect. Oh, by the way, we've got artificial intelligence listening to everything you're doing. and you know, and, and monitoring you and and, yeah. and and they don't even know why. And I mean, I can't even imagine having that conversation with somebody. Like if I'm bringing someone in the phones, I want to explain to them why that they're doing and why it matters and why it might be that patient who we, we, we know that oral health has a huge correlation between overall health these days. And it might be that one phone call that saves someone's life. And that might sound, you know, idealistic, but the truth is it happens. And it happens in America and dental practices every single day. And, and, and sharing people the compelling reason why it's so important to convert that person to an appointment. And then sharing them the compelling reason why it's, it's important where you guys are going and how you're going to impact their family and their community. And, and doing that in a compelling way is so impactful and it's so important to do. And then that's the reason for coming to work. Mm -hmm. And then we, so that McDonald's isn't going to provide that by the way. And so that's why they come to work, not because of pay. They can work there because there's a compelling reason to t come to work. Then we would move that into the next conversation, which is, am I paying them adequately? Am I, and maybe adequately isn't the right word. I mean, I worked at a company when I first got out of college. We called it The Firm. Um, that's not the name of the company, but we called it The Firm because old John Grisham novel, you know, The, the Firm, you got in The Firm, you couldn't leave The Firm, right? <laughs> we had like a 1% turnover rate. And so I'll tell you what they did in this company. They would, they had the best HR of anything. We had like pie eating contests and a full gym and like, uh, I do remember I did compete in the pie eating contest, the croissant, by the way. The I, croissant roller. I, I, I kicked butt at the pie eating contest. Okay. I don't think I won, but I think maybe I got – I think I did get – maybe I maybe I did. Uh -huh. I think I it the was that college there. stomach. When you I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Like, that's ah. right. And that's why it took me the next 10 years to lose weight. No, um, <laughs> the pie eating contest. Uh, I did do a pie eating contest, but my whole point is they had bands. I, I told you, I shared you the story. They used to have a cart that rolled around in the morning with like yeah. with free croissants muffins and, and croissants and all that stuff. And, and, and nobody ever left. It was called the firm. And what they would do is they would go out to the marketplace and they would look at your position. And what they would do is they would survey the marketplace, find out today what your position was worth in the marketplace. They would go up 3% from that. And that's your pay annual pay raise every year. That's what they did every year. Now, why would they do that? because they knew the cost of turnover. They knew if that person left, they would then have to go play market rate for the next person, plus mm -hmm. the fees to recruit that person, plus trying to, to, to now, now, you know, obviously all the costs that go in a new team member and all this thing. So they said, why would we do that? Why don't we just take care of the people we already have? Mm -hmm. And so this firm, that's why we called it the firm. Nobody ever left because everybody got paid well. It was an amazing atmosphere. They cared about your physical health, your mental health. Uh, you know, they had, oh my gosh, it was like the, it was the greatest place to work. It was amazing. And and I only bring that up to say like the market has, dental has been driven by a bunch of people who don't know how to run a business, but yet we've used that model over and over again. Why, no matter how many times I say it, Matthew, you know this, I've been saying mm -hmm. for years, why the hell do you have somebody picking up your phone, making $9 an hour when it's the, it, it drives revenue in your business more than any other position outside of the doctor. I'm getting like passionate, Eric, calm down, <laughs> calm down. Why in the fudge would you do that like that doesn't makes no that is ignorant if there ever was mm -hmm. an ignorant it, it's it's dumb 
It's asinine. The idea that you have someone paying, get, paying paid the lowest amount who has so much responsibility for your revenue and then you complain that they're not the person you want them to be. Well, no shit. You're hiring somebody at $9 an hour who yeah. is getting paid less than somebody at McDonald's and you're wondering why they're not acting like a $70,000 a year employee. Well, there's a reason why. Because they're not a $70,000 a year employee. They're uneducated yeah. and they're $9 an hour. They have little to no training, little to no education and you wonder why they're not doing it. Now, I get compelling about this because I that this is why I say things like this is why I say I could move across the street from you and I would destroy, I would decimate your office within no time. I know mm -hmm. I can go to any corner in America across the street from you and I will whoop your butt. Why? Because of things like that. Because when they call my office, I guarantee it's going to be completely different than when they call your office. And I guarantee the experience is going to be completely different. And I guarantee the way I'm going to market is going to be completely different. Last podcast, we talked about Unique selling proposition. I'm going to use my unique selling proposition to where they think you're the bum across the street. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that to 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 offend anybody. I'm telling you as a wake up call to say, look, I mean, because here's the thing: if you don't realize this, I'm coming for you, and not mm -hmm. me literally, but people like me are going to move across the street from you. And if you do not listen to this podcast, this is probably the most I said probably this is the most relevant podcast dental podcasts in the United States today. And if you're not taking this information and you're not moving forward with this information and you're not making these things happen, it's yeah. going to come and get you because mm -hmm. I'm and, telling you right now, you're going to lose. And to touch on that, I mean, if you were to take two practices, okay, two practices side by side, and you had one practice where everyone was $9, $12, maybe even $15 an hour, and then you have the other practice where it starts at 15, 20, 25, this practice looks completely different, completely different. The way the team acts in the practice, the way the team handles themselves. And we always talk about that all the time is, you know, sometimes just giving someone that pay bump makes them take themselves to a new standard. That's right. Because they expect more of themselves because they're being compensated more than a $9 an hour. You go to someone, you go from 9 to $18 an hour. They're like, I guess I have to step my game up. Well, and I've never seen somebody pay somebody. Now, I've seen people get overpaid, especially in the hygiene world. Not to knock any hygienists out there, but I, I've, I've seen it. I went inside, this is a true story. I got a guy one time in California who his hygienists were making about $110,000 a year. And you know what their biggest problem was? They weren't getting paid enough. I'm telling you right now, I mean, you can't pay someone enough. You can keep trying to pay them. But my point in telling you that is to say like, but there is an adequate pay, okay? And there is paying mm -hmm. for somebody for what they're worth. And I will say that you're right because what will happen is by hiring that person, they'll convert more phone calls. They'll cost less drama. They'll have less turnover. It'll actually push up your revenues. I've never had somebody ever come to me in, in all the years I've been doing this and thousands of people I've worked with. I've never had somebody come. Yeah, well, I paid somebody what they're worth and now my business is just sinking. I, I yeah. it's never happened. You know, I've never had somebody. Now we're struggling. Uh, now we're struggling. I was really good before, but man, I gave her three bucks an hour and now yeah. I tell you what, my <laughs> business is tanking. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to apply for welfare. I mean, it's, you know, come on guys. Come on, like, PPP again. Please give me a PPP <laughs> It's never happened. Why? Because it has, it has a direct correlation with revenues. And this is why I argue that CPA shouldn't be run this business. Well, a business person would tell you like, look, invest in your people, invest in the best of the best, get the best people. Don't hire the cheapest people in the marketplace. If you have the cheapest people in the marketplace, then it's, it's the same thing as an NBA team. I want you to think about winning a championship. Now we'll go back. Look, we, look sports. We brought it back. Sports, sports again. Sports. So, uh, so, so we got it. We got there. Somehow we got back. But if you're building a sports team, you're, you want the best GM. You mm -hmm. want the best coaches. You want the best front office. You want the, the, the best support teams, the best secondary coaches. You want the best physical therapists, the best, best trainers, the best of the best for everything. And mm -hmm. so that w you're ready to go to battle so that you've got, that's how you win championships, right? Is yep. by putting together the best of the best. Now, when they're putting mm -hmm. together the best of the best, they know what happens when they put together the best of the best is they win and they build championship teams. And so the same thing should happen to your dental practice or it will happen to your dental practice. Yeah. If you've got the best team and you top grade your team and you bring in the best team members, then what will happen is you will all sudden wake up and have a completely different atmosphere. You'll have less stress, better team, less turnovers, higher revenues, better retention. I mean, you're talking about so and so people will want to come into your organization like it. So for non sports analogy, people, let's bring it to Apple, Google. If you've ever looked at 
what they pay their employees, they're some of the highest paid people in the entire country. Do they have a problem trying to find people? No. People are trying to get into Google, trying to get into Apple, trying to get into Amazon because they know that they pay people well. But their organization as a whole is top notch because of that. Now, no one said on this podcast to overpay. Yes, yeah. there's ratios, but you'll find your ratios will fall in line because your revenues will increase. You want the best of the best, the best doctors, the best patients, you know, you really want the best patients, but how to get the best patients is the ability to turn away patients. Um, you know, you, you can turn away patients when you have so many patients coming in that you don't know what to do with. You do that by having the best experience and the best team and the best, you know, and, and by that you'll, you'll see it has this direct correlation. You know, and, and sometimes it's what you do that happens years later. I mean, you know, let's take this podcast, for example. When we first started this podcast, I mean, we were in a different location. You know, we got, we're in the studio now. We've got this beautiful studio. Right now, I'm, I'm meeting with architects. When I get back, we're building another studio, you know, an even bigger, you know, location. And, and so, but, but when you first start this podcast, you know, it's funny when you start a podcast or you start like a YouTube channel, like nobody listens. It's like, it's so depressing, right? You, <laughs> you start a podcast and then and like you go out there and like one listen, you're like, you see and, the and, and it's like, like your mom or something, right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it's like, right, no one's there. And then before you know, it, you get like 22 people and you're like, man, we got 22 people listening. And then you get fast forward to today where we've got thousands and thousands and thousands. Well, well, how does that happen? Well, that happens because of the fact that, that we, we do put time into the production. We do put time into the content. We do to put time into to the episodes. It didn't take one day. It took years, right? There's two books there, Financial Evolution, Dental Wealth. If you haven't read them, you should. And and what happens is like those take time. Like all this stuff takes time, but now what ends up happening is you wake up and you've got a portfolio of information so people can get to know you and we've invested in it over a period of time and then you get the results. It's the same thing with top grading your team. By bringing the same team, no, not tomorrow, although you might have immediate results, but what happens is because of the experience is so great, because the communication is so great, so because turnover is low, because you attract other top talented people because you're a top talented organization, you wake up and your revenues are through the roof. You have more patience than you know what to do with. You have an amazing team. You're, you're, you're celebrating together. You're expanding at a greater rate. Why? Because you invested, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. If I had started this podcast and, and day one said, what's my return on it? It would not have looked good, right? But it, what yeah. ends up happening is over time though, by putting in the effort, by building out the content, by building out the right, so you, then you get the massive result. Well, it's, and I you only use that relation to say like, yeah, you know, be willing to build out the team, be willing to put mm -hmm. in the time and effort to build out a world-class team it will make all the difference in your business, the future. And and if McDonald's is kicking your butt as far as like taking care of their team people. members and you're in a <laughs> professional organization, um, you know, and by the way, there's people listening to this podcast who have excuses, but that's just story you're telling yourself. Like if you listen to this conversation and you got at any point where like, no, that's not true. I can't pay people. It's a story you told yourself. It's not true. It's completely false self-imposed limitation you put on yourself. It is not true. Nothing you just said to yourself is true. The truth is you can create a world-class organization. You can do this in dentistry. I did it personally. So I know how to do this by my, like I've done it. So don't tell me it can't be done. Um, so, you know, go back and look at your organization and say, do we have the top talent? What's the minimum required? How about this? What's the minimum standard by which somebody gets in this organization? Like I would maybe spend some time there. Like what's the minimum pay? What's the minimum standard? What is it we will not, what, like what does a person have to meet? You know, at Google, you mentioned Google, they have to serve like an, they have to solve an algorithm like to get in, right? And they, yeah. one of the things that, that Google's famous for is that they started putting these, these math problems out to the internet. And if you solved it, you could get a job. Yeah. Well, it's, the, you know, that's because they had a minimum standard by which you could get into Google, but you had to be smart enough to be able to solve this algorithm because they assumed that if you could, then yeah. then you could, then you're smart enough if you're in the equation and yeah, you can handle it. So, so it's the same thing when we talk about, you know, your organization is you should have a minimum standard. Tower leadership is a minimum standard, you know, of, of who's going to walk in our door. You should have a minimum standard 
who works for you. And so I would write that down, get done with this podcast, write it down say, what is our minimum standard? What does somebody have to do? work with your leadership team? Talk through that. Hey, what is it that we will no longer allow in this door? And if you're saying, well, I just need a hot body. Well, then, then, then you're in what we call recruitment instead of selection. You should mm-hmm. always be recruiting front office people. Always be trying to get new front office people. Always be trying to get hijacks because if you wait till the last minute till you need someone, you're in trouble. I just talked to a gentleman yesterday morning and I'm recruiting. I'm all, always be recruiting, always be closing ABCs. So, yeah. so I was, I was talking to him and he was like, oh, this person's an amazing person and could be an executive, da, da, da. I said, man, make an introduction. Will you do me a favor? Just send an email and introduce me. I'd love to get on a Zoom call and meet this person. I'm not hiring this person right now, but I might in the future. So I would love to, to interview this person. And I'm yep. like, look, if you know great people, can you get me on the phone with this person? Mm-hmm. And I'd love to talk to him because you don't know, it might be a year from now where I, I I've got half the tower team got hired that way. That's right. <laughs> And, and, you know, and, and that's what you're right. I mean, th- he's actually right. By the way, those of you listening, like there's people that came to Tower Team. We just started another person who a year ago we met and it's a year later who's been wanting to come to this organization. Now she's part of this organization and she's an amazing member of this organization. You know, we have another member who waited six months. Like, I mean, just because we meet you, that doesn't mean we're going to hire, but we're meeting great quality people. And so that when the position's open, we're ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it's, and you should start looking at your organization. If you don't have people that are lining up to come into your door right now, it's either you're not treating the team as fairly as you should, or you're not compensating them accordingly. If you did both of those things, there should be people reaching out to you constantly or reaching out to your team members. Be like, how do I get a part of your organization? How do I do this? How do I, you know, get in front of the doctor? And if people aren't doing that now, you should realize that you probably are missing somewhere. What a great episode. This is a great episode. It might even be shorter. I have no idea what our timer is. Reese used to have like a timer right here for me. I used to know exactly <laughs> like what the time was. Now I'm flying blind. I don't, I don't, I don't know. And, and, and I could hear myself talk all day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I think that, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, so I, I have no idea where I'm at uh, time wise, but you know, thanks for tuning in. Um, and listening because the truth is that this is an important message and, and it's relevant and the timing's important. Um, this is a relevant podcast and, you know, make sure you stay up to date with it, you know, share this with people, you know, um, um, if, if you're listening to this podcast, we've probably sold out on the leadership retreat, but if we haven't at this point, um, reach out to us, see if there's a spot left We're probably all gone, but in case there is uh, reach out to us and, and so you don't miss out. We'll get you scheduled. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.